how to more efficiently use auto recon. Welcome to another video, guys. This one I think will be very helpful for a lot of the people, especially in the comments recently. I've been getting asked questions about auto recon and things like that due to one of the videos I made quite a while ago, what you need to know for OSCP. Uh, I plan on probably adding this one to that playlist as well to help elevate you guys as I elevate this, uh, my own skill set. You know, whenever I find out new information, learn how to do things more efficiently, I like to brief you guys on it because when I level up, we all level up. And uh, I definitely appreciate all you guys in the comment section that have shared your knowledge and on my Discord that have shared knowledge and help other people level up. So let's just do that here in this video. What's up, guys? This is Ryan from Elevate Cyber. Now, when you're running on a recon, you know, it could take a while sometimes. You know, he's Tiberius, the author of this, is, um, you know, constantly making improvements. He's actually releasing a version two of Auto Recon, but this one will cover the first, the original Auto Recon. And uh, even still, sometimes it can take a while for all the scans to complete, but you don't necessarily need all of them to be completed in most cases in order to move forward with your target box. So I'm going to demo exactly that. I just picked a random box from Hack the Box to demonstrate this on. This is La Casa de Papel. And I will just say auto recon, point the IP address at it, and let it run. Now what you'll see is that it's scanning the target. And this thing, I mean, this thing can do so much more than just this. You can actually scan multiple targets simultaneously, which is very handy for something like an OSCP, which was the whole reason that this tool was created in the first place, right? You can just point it at a number of boxes, you know, on your exam. You can point it at all five boxes, start scanning them all simultaneously. Now, what you're going to see is that it's going to tell you every step of the way what's happening. Things are nicely co-coordinated. And, uh, yeah, you can see the things start as they start. You can see the things finish as they finish. So, and anything, any port that's found open, it'll show here. So, what I like to do, I don't just sit at this screen and wait for this to complete. I mean, I don't know that necessarily people were doing that, but... I'm just trying to make it known, like, here's how I use it, and here's how, you know, if you didn't know this, because I didn't know all this stuff at first either, right? You could just sit here and wait for it all to complete, but you, there's no reason to do that. Look, we can already see 21's open, 22's open, 80's open. What I like to do is, in Tmux, open another session, go into my scans, and now look at all this info I have. Not to say all these are complete right now, but I can check, right? So I can cat the quick end map scan. That's normally what I start with and see, okay, here's all the information. Like maybe the whole script didn't finish, but this piece of the script is complete and I can start going through this information. So what I would look for is like, okay, um, VSF TPD, let's look into that. Let's look into this service or that service. And then by the time I come back here, if I've exhausted all my recon or enumeration and other things, I can come back and check, see what else is done. Probably more stuff is done and go from there. So the fact that it takes a while for everything to complete has never really been an issue for me with this tool. But when I first used this tool, I didn't know how to make use of this. Now, this is what you really need to pay attention to. So I'm in the scans directory. It created this directory for me. If I do an LS here, there is a lot more than just Nmap scans, right? You got GoBuster, right? There's no reason to manually be running GoBuster um, right off the bat, right? Now, what I will say is I believe this is a general GoBuster scan. So it's not going to do any of the extensions for you. So if you browse the app and realize, hey, this is a PHP app, then you might want to run your own GoBuster scan just to supply the uh, PHP extension because it will probably catch stuff that this didn't catch. So stuff like that you should keep in mind. Now, see, in this case, the GoBuster did not finish yet. And if I come over here, we could probably see that. It's running the task here but uh, it never actually finished that quite yet. Oh, it looks like it actually failed in this case, um, which is something that will happen from time to time, but it's very easy to catch that because of the color coordination going on here. So if this did complete successfully, we would have the results available to us uh, right here, and we could start going through that. So that's something to keep in mind as well. Um but yeah, there's a lot of really useful stuff. You don't even have to manually check for something like a robots.txt. That's something that you will have right here. In this case, is a 404 not found. So we can move on from there. We have Nikto, right? You don't have to manually run Nikto. So it's not just Nmap. This thing is automating. This is automating a number of things, which I think most people probably are aware of that. But what I wasn't aware of is that 
And, um, you know, Reconnoiter did things slightly differently. I like this one a lot better than Reconnoiter, and this is the successor to it. He took a lot of inspiration from that tool. Uh, but, yeah, you can really get some good information here. But it depends on what's finished. See, this one has also finished, which was basically just running an additional Nmap check you know, with some scripts and things like that against the FTP service for us. So we can see here um, the results of that, and we can even get some information on the OS. Uh, it was able to grab the banner, which is often the case with an FTP service. So, you know, I could just go straight into here. So I could do like um, over here, search up on exploit DB for vulnerabilities here. And in this case, this could possibly be the way in because we have confirmed the exact version that's running on this box. And, uh, you know, I have encountered where, you know, not necessarily this is going to work, but yeah, by default, it will have a backdoor command execution. We can leverage Metasploit for it. And I've also, as I've shown on this channel, we don't have to use Metasploit. We could go out on the internet and find uh, on GitHub, there's some exploits for you to use to, um, for those of you that like to exploit without Metasploit. But uh, not to uh, derail us too far here, let's get back to the scanning. Just, yeah, basically what I'm saying is take it, you know, take um, note of all of the stuff you have here. Now, this is the other thing that I want to bring to your attention. There's a manual commands here, which is really cool stuff. Let me clear the screen. Um, let's see here. This didn't get copied. So I look at something like this, and uh, maybe the terminal isn't the best way to view this file uh, well, with the current uh, font size I have here. But um, yeah, you can see all the commands that uh, were being run. So this is also a really great learning opportunity too to go through this and see what uh, what commands that you you would do for particular services, right? It tells you what service these are for, right? HTTP on four four three, uh, and so on, right? So for each open port, they have a number of different commands to run, right? Port eighty, port twenty two, all this stuff. So it's very easy. Like whenever you run a tool, you want to know what the tool is doing. This makes it very easy to uh, understand that. And then any errors we can take a look at as well. So make use of these things. I, at first, <laughs> at first I used to kind of ignore all this here. Don't ignore this though, by any means, right? So errors, remember GoBuster errored out. You can see uh, some information on this. Uh, the, the command exited with uh, exit code one is a non-zero exit code. If it, if it uh, returns zero, that means it completed successfully. And uh, so then we could use this information to try for ourselves. Oh, okay. So it looks like in this case, and this is giving me more information. So I was wrong about what I said before. They're actually, by default, it was using uh, a number of extensions. It was using .text, .html, .php, .asp, .aspx, and .jsp. So if you're if you like start browsing around the app, you find out that it's using um, some technology that's not that, like say maybe a Python, maybe you want to add .py to that or, uh, you know, so on, right? So yeah, now we can see more information, more granular information by looking into this stuff. Let's go ahead and check out the uh, commands log here. We looked at the manual commands, but let's see how that differs from commands here. And we see even more commands, basically. And once again, not the prettiest way to view it, probably if we made our font size smaller, but I want it to be viewable for everyone watching at home on whatever device. But uh, yeah, you can learn how to run curl commands and stuff even. This is how they found, they determined if there was a robots.txt, right? They, they teed it as well to display it and save it. So a lot you can learn from going through scripts like this. And this is how I learned enumeration in part uh, back when I was taking the OSCP. I used to use a tool called Reconnoiter, which I've made a video about before. And I would look at what enumeration uh, commands were being run when a service was open to further enumerate on the for the actual script. And that's how I learned, okay, so like when I see this script, 
this, these are the commands and tools I can utilize to uh, further enumerate. So don't just use this to try to get easy answers, but also use this to learn as well. So it could be a great learning tool, but see, even if there's four tasks still running, it's like, but what are the tasks and do these tasks even matter for your target box, right? It might be some long running UDP scan or something like that. And there's nothing in UDP that you need to even be aware of for your particular box. So it really, it really depends. I would say most of the time, definitely for me so far, most of the time, um, I didn't even have to worry about whatever tasks were still running. Um, I mean, if we look at this point, let's see if, um, let's go ahead and check if the full scan has completed or the UDP as well, right? So we have UDP here we can look at. So the UDP scan has finished in this case. And then if we look at the full scan, we can see that it, it's still going on, right? But even though the full scan is still going on, here's where it comes down to understanding the tool, right? Even though the scan's still going on, we can always go back to this uh, here where we initially ran the scan and we can see in purple what ports were found so far. So the fact that we only see 21, 22, 80, and 443 and we haven't seen any more purple since then. And that tells us that even though this full scan is still running, it did not find any additional ports because any additional ports that it would find would be purple here. It would say like the TCP and the port number, right? Kind of like here in the service that it predicts. So that is a way to really speed things up. If you ever ran a full Nmap scan with a dash V flag, it's kind of like that. So it'll tell you as it finds it. So, yeah, I just really wanted to clear up because a lot of people were unsure of like um, once you finish, you know, you need it to finish necessarily. And I used to think the same way, but the more I started to play around and understand the tool, the more effective I was able to be with it. And this is something that uh, provides you a lot of information, but it's not always very, you might not know right out of the gate where to look for that information, right? Then you have the XML formats to all your Nmap scans here, which is another thing to note. So if you want to import this into something like a Zenmap or a Sparta, you can do that as well. So hopefully this cleared up for you guys and helped you out, whether you're going for OSCP, doing CTFs, or just uh, out there doing your own kind of training, whatever it may be, to enter the job market. Best of luck to you as well there. Uh, this is information I definitely would have liked to have had when I was starting out. And that's the goal with this channel to elevate everyone's skill set in cyber, especially as I level up. I want you guys to level up as well. So if I was able to help you do just that, go ahead and subscribe to the channel, hit the like button as well to help get that message out there in the algorithms. And I will see you guys over in some of these videos. If you want to get more hands-on content and really start utilizing some of these tools we talk about to, uh, assist with our pen testing. So I'll see you guys right over there. Thanks for watching.